the long-range strategy is what it says. It, it's a long-range strategy. It took years to come to fruition. There are a number of reasons for this. They had to allow, for example, those with memories of the Stalin repressions to die off. Mm -hmm. They had to ensure that the true opposition no longer existed, and they have liquidated all true opposition in all Con East European countries. In all communist all countries. countries. There, which there, means, with a few exceptions. Which means, as Galitsyn has pointed out, then that we hit well, and those deceptions are subject to question. Those exceptions are subject to yes, question. Yes, even those. Deceptions. But when we see a supposed dissident movement within a yes. communist or so-called former communist state, having access to the media, operating openly, sure. having resources, and being able to express mm. itself and be heard around yeah. the world, it would immediately mm. be suspect of being a KGB front operation, at least mm. in terms of its leadership. Absolutely correct. Yes. And as a result of the ex uh, what Gorbachev, uh, Gorbachev first of all launches perestroika mm -hmm. internally, and when the softening up process has been completed, i.e. the West is attuned to the fact that there's been this apparent reform mm -hmm. and that it's all falling apart, mm -hmm. they then export perestroika to the whole world. Yes. So that in fact what has happened is that you have, instead of having walk-ins, you know, uh, defectors arriving and knocking on the West door. You've got a mass walk-in mm -hmm. uh, so that no one knows who's genuine and who isn't. Mm -hmm. To go back just a bit regarding uh, Golitsyn defecting to the American CIA in the early 1960s, he had an advocate in James Angleton, yeah. and the influence of what Golitsyn revealed was felt through Angleton's policies. Yes. But that came to an end in 1974 when Angleton was fired by CIA Director William Colby mm -hmm. after Galitsyn had warned that there were Soviet moles, Soviet yeah. agents within the CIA at high levels. Um, to what extent was Galitsyn vindicated by the Aldrich Ames exposure? Totally. Yes. I mean, Galitsyn has been telling everybody mm -hmm. since he finished the first book, New Lies for Old, which actually he finished in 1980, yes. although it was only published in 1984, that the CIA was penetrated. Mm -hmm. This was obvious from internal evidence. Now, of course, with the, the Ames case, uh, that is proved. I mean, everybody knows that there are many more moles inside more Western moles, intelligence yes. than just Ames, but uh, Ames is a, is a symptom of the penetration of the Central Intelligence Agency. In the book, as you said, written in 1980, published in 1984, Galitsyn's New Lies for Old, um, he revealed not only this massive disinformation strategy, which goes back to 1959, and, and the ramifications of it, the applications of it during the 1960s, 1970s. But he made a series, the book was published in 84, he made a series of incredible predictions regarding what was mm -hmm. going to come as a result of this strategy. Yeah. And the predictions are just amazing yeah. to read. Can we go, would you go over some of them? Well, I mean, uh, he had, there are three or four pages which are just chock-a-block full of predictions. Uh, he, he talks about the removal of the Berlin Wall, liberalization starting in East Germany and spreading to the rest of uh, Eastern Europe. Um, he, he says, for example, that Dubček will be restored in Czechoslovakia, which duly happened for a brief period. Mm -hmm. um, and, general, and he talks about a reconciliation with the West and the reunification of Germany and so on and so forth. And in a recent book published by Mark, uh, written by Mark Riebling, uh, called Wedge, The Secret War Between uh, the FBI and CIA, published in 1994, uh, Riebling uh, carries out uh, a, method, uh, a careful analysis of um, Galitzin's uh, predictions in New Lies for Old, and he established that out of 148 falsifiable predictions, 139 had been verified by 1993. Now that, uh, and he gave him a uh, an accuracy rating of uh, over 94 percent. Mm -hmm. That is without parallel in the West. Mm -hmm. I mean, this puts Gillitz in, in, a, in a separate category from everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, I think. In other words, if Gillitzin is not telling, if Gillitzin mm -hmm. is not telling the truth about have everybody this, has uh, to explain why these well, predictions were correct. If he's not telling the truth about the fact that all that we have witnessed since 1989 was planned mm -hmm. as Soviet disinformation strategy. Mm -hmm going back this far, then he has to be a prophet. 
He just has to. He has to be a clairvoyant. Either he has to be. Uh, he has to have supernatural powers. He has to have supernatural powers. Or yes. he has to understand Soviet strategy. That's right. And of course, the answer is the latter. Yes. He understands Soviet strategy because he knows that it's based on the thinking of Lenin. He studied Lenin. Now, one of the things that I've done in the last few years is go back to Lenin and try to read and understand this. What this evil man is saying. Mm -hmm. He's actually preaching hatred. He's preaching uh, how to deceive. And he's teaching us how to deceive. And Lenin's disciples remain in control of the world communist movement. Mm -hmm. All they've done is relabeled themselves mm -hmm. in order to appear uh, acceptable to the West. There's a passage in Lenin where he says that, there's a, that there may come a time in the revolution when uh, true revolutionaries must put on the appearance and the clothing and the manner and the language of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And this is what they've done. So that, um, and, and it's very easy to see that this is the case once one understands that this is what's going on. If you take someone like Andrei Kozirev, the Russian foreign minister, you can see mm -hmm. that everything he says is a deception. Mm -hmm. he, he, he is an absolute, he's the most brilliant mm -hmm. representative of the Leninist case mm -hmm. uh, currently operating. He's the son, incidentally, of one of the um, Soviet. Uh, diplomats who were uh, kicked out of London by, uh, by the Douglas Hume government in 1972. There is a description in New Lies for Old of a new liberal or more democratic figure who would emerge as the leader of the Soviet Union sure. that is a mirror image of Mikhail Gorbachev. Yes. Now tell us about Mikhail Gorbachev and perhaps uh, he is apparently more credible, at least in the eyes of the world and the media, successor Boris Yeltsin. Did they ever show any trace of interest in democratic reform? Well, what they did show an interest in was uh, in the continuation of their Leninist strategy. Yes, I mean, exactly. the, the important point about Gorbachev is that, as in the case of Hitler and Mein Kampf, he clearly and repeatedly laid down in black and white, in speeches and in his book Perestroika, what he was doing. He made it quite clear what he was doing. In Perestroika, he said, we went back to Lenin, we reviewed Lenin, we took inspiration from Lenin, and we based our strategy on Lenin. So when I was uh, asked by Mrs. Thatcher, as she then was, to see her in the House of Commons in July 1991 to explain these matters to her, I was completely flabbergasted when she said to me, I don't think Gorbachev is a Leninist anymore. And then she also said, um, I don't think we've been deceived. At least I hope we haven't. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I was, in fact, that was the real turning point in my, the later part of my life. That was when I realized I should spend basically most of my time mm -hmm. trying to explain how, how she was conned. Mm -hmm and how wrong she was. Of course, it's very simple to do. You can show from Gorbachev's speeches, from his writings, that in fact he was constantly quoting Lenin. He, he is and was a key advocate of the Leninist world revolution. And of course, he remains so to this day. Mm -hmm. uh, Gorbachev, as you probably know, is in charge of the so-called Gorbachev Foundation, which uh, various experts led by Hans Graf Huhn, uh, a well-known German expert, has, has, have identified as, in fact, the International Department of the CPSU. And it's based here in San Francisco. Communist Party, Soviet Union. Yes. yes. The International Department of the CPSU was, in fact, the Comintern. Mm -hmm. So the Gorbachev Foundation, based in the Presidio in San Francisco, is, in fact, the Comintern. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, what Gorbachev is in charge of is influencing the Western elite. And in fact, uh, the, the key elite, of course, is based here. This is the elite that he has to influence, mm -hmm. which is what he's been doing ever since he arrived with a large delegation in Washington in 1987. That's right. And his opponent, or his political rival, or his, um, mm. uh, the opposition, the quote-unquote opposition he faced, Boris Yeltsin mm. comes from the same Leninist background. Oh no question. I mean, uh, Boris Yeltsin is the was awarded the the Order of Lenin. He is a Communist Party chief. Uh, he's he could not possibly have risen mm -hmm. to the level that he did in in the structures without being uh, approved at the highest level. I mean, no one can 
can move without approval? Well, now, looking at the reality of what exists today in the light of the predictions Gleason made in New Lies mm -hmm. for Old, we see that as he predicted, the Soviet Union and its power and control over its uh, republics, uh, separate republics and uh, satellite mm -hmm. nations still continues through the same mm -hmm. KGB and leaden bureaucracies that have simply mm -hmm. been given new names, well, the, but that are still yeah, in place, yes. fully in place. The so-called independence of the Soviet republics is false and provisional. Uh, it's based on Lenin's fake Far Eastern Republic, which he set up in the late 1920s. Uh, and their purpose, the existence of these republics has been brought about for a number of strategic reasons. I mean, at a fairly low level, one of the most important reasons is that uh, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund and all the international institutions have been penetrated by